Okay, prepayment of next year's property taxes. Now here's the, net, the same kind of issue comes up here. We're gonna say, when do you get the deduction for property taxes? Well, the same as most other taxes for, or most other deductions for federal individual income tax purposes on a cash basis when you pay it. And then you're gonna come up with a bunch of bright ideas and say, well, look, I made more income this year that I'm gonna make next year because of the progressive tax system, I'm gonna be in higher tax brackets. So I would like to take more deductions this year than next year. Why don't I play with the cutoffs and I'll prepay some of my stuff like taxes. I'll try to pay it in advance, getting the deduction this year and then not next year, which will be beneficial because I'm in higher tax brackets this year or something. Now the IRS is gonna not want to do that, of course. They're gonna to try to limit the 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 manipulation of the tax code which again if you look at like corporations they have to use an accrual basis typically because the cash basis would allow them too much flexibility for that type of manipulation which distorts the actual financial statements for individual income taxes we can't audit everybody that closely to make sure they're using an accrual basis and it's too complex for most individuals to kind of have to do an accrual basis. The cash basis is already hard enough. So you stick to the cash basis, but then people are gonna to try to get creative and do some accrual cutoff things. And then the IRS is gonna to have to try to make rules to stop that from happening, right? Which one of those would be these prepayment ideas. So only taxes paid in 2023 and assessed prior to 2024 can be deducted for 2023. State or local law determines whether and when a property tax is assessed, which is generally when the taxpayer becomes liable for the property tax imposed. Line number six, other taxes. Enter only uh, one total on line six, but list the types and amounts of tax included. So we have the other taxes, so these would be Obviously, they don't have their own line item, so you would think they would be less common uh, items. We could put the one line here and then include the detail of them uh, on another schedule, right? So include on this line income taxes you paid to a foreign country and generation uh, skipping tax. That's the GST imp imposed on certain income distributions. Now, again, if you have foreign taxes, and you're dealing with people that are paying foreign taxes, you're probably dealing with more complex returns. That's gonna be a question from a taxpayer perspective, a tax preparer perspective. Do I want to be taking on clients that have uh, issues that are outside of my state even, because I'm probably gonna specialize in the state that we are in, if they have other states or uh, they have tax implications in multiple states, that could add a level of complexity, which you might say, I'm not just gonna take those on, or maybe I will. And then uh, foreign, if people have foreign taxes that they owe and so on and dual citizenship and basically our foreign income and that kind of thing, whole nother world that can really expand the complexity of the tax return. The question from a tax preparer standpoint being, do I wanna take those clients on? Do I wanna specialize in those areas? Maybe that's where I wanna you know, really create value uh, possibly. And then we've got this generation skipping uh, tax. What, what is that? Well, note that we have the, the estate tax or the federal government usually taxes people on an income situation, meaning we tax people when they earn the money. We don't tax their balance sheet because we already taxed it when they earned the money. So that's the idea. But when someone dies, they wanted to tax the balance sheet. They wanna compile all the, all the stuff that they have and tax the wealth that, that they have at that point in time. That's called an estate tax or uh, a death tax, right? So, so what are people gonna do if that happens? Well, if you're gonna tax me when I die, I'm gonna try to give away all my money before I die on my deathbed, right? But if you, so then the government's gonna say, well, I don't like that because now the, this, that rich person, I was, I was all waiting on my fingers were like Mr. Burns is, is going, oh, excellent. Ready to take the guy's money when he dies because he's on his deathbed, but then he gave all his money to his children right before he died. And so, and so we can't have that. So then, <laughs> so then you could see that they're gonna say, well, you can't do that. You can't give all your money away on the death bed side of things. So, so how are you gonna limit that? Well, then you have to put in a, a, a gift, uh, a limitation on the gifts 
that you can give, right? So you, and that's going to lead into all kinds of, of estate planning kind of issues in terms of how can someone pass money from one generation to another without being hit with the state tax, uh, with the with the estate tax or death tax, and then income tax situations. And that's when you're saying, well, if I can't give it to my to my son or daughter, maybe I can give it to their grandchild and have a generation skipping kind of situation and so on and so forth. So that gets into estate planning, which again, is usually there for higher income individuals because those would be the ones that would typically be subject to this kind of uh, estate or death tax. Although I wouldn't be surprised the way things are going because we're the money's, you know, the federal government spending too much money. They're, they're going to, like anything else, they might start applying it lower down, lower down the ladder at some point when they when they hit the wall in terms of spending. But that's so that's usually planning for large for higher income individuals. So you would be dealing with that kind of thing. Typically, if you have higher income individuals and you're doing things like estate planning or more complex uh, tax planning situations, usually. All right, tip. You may want to take a credit for the foreign tax uh, instead of a deduction. So if you have foreign taxes, then the question is, again, how are you going to be dealing with that? Because if you have taxes related to a, a foreign uh, country, they're going to have their own tax system. So the question is, who's going to get the income, the foreign country, the tax income, the United States or the other country? We don't want a situation where you're double dipping because that would be bad for the taxpayer, of course. But in order to work that out, we would need some kind of tax treaty between, in essence, uh, the two countries. So you have to see how how that works. And then and then basically what's the best way to record that on the return? Is it like a deduction that you record on it or is there a credit? So, again, that would be more of a specialized area for people that have like income, for example, in multiple countries that could be subject to. Uh, multiple taxes from those countries. So you may want to take a credit for the foreign tax instead of a deduction. See the instructions for Schedule 3, Form 1040, Line 1 for details. Don't include taxes you paid to a U.S. territory in this line. Instead, include U.S. territory taxes on the appropriate state and local tax line. Don't include federal estate tax on income uh, in respect of a decedent on this line, instead include it on line 16. 